I'm going to cover. But I'm, you know, I want you to go through it. So tell me, how did you do this problem? Can I say that back? Yeah. Okay, so the way I did it at home was a little bit different, but like <clears> I said, I, I left it at home. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of went back over my notes, and I did the... Uh, um, so first, first step here, they share the demand. Right. Okay, how do you comprehend that? Um, 100 uh, minus parentheses uh, Q1 plus Q2. Yes. So when they say they share the demand, usually we, we assume they split the right. market. Okay, right. how do we split the market? So which means, you know, each person, each firm will face half of the market share, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do, I want to show you how do we get this. P equal to 100 minus 2Q, oh, right? This, oh, is the total, yeah. this is total Q, right? right? Right. And this is Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. Right, right. Okay, so what we're going to do here is Okay, I'm going to plug this back into this. Is it what you've done? Yeah. Yeah. Is it what you done? That's right, what, right? yeah. Okay. And um, is this 2Q or just Q? It's 2Q. It's 2Q. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we assume that if... <coughs> okay, when we say, you know, they share the demand. Okay, they share the demand. The assumption is this, if they are charging the same price, so this has to be the first condition here. If they charge the same price, then they would be able to split the market. If they charge a different price, they would not be able to split the market, right? Mm. So that's why when they were able to put both Q1 and Q2 in here and using the same price, because if the price is different by these two firms, and we cannot do something like that to derive each individual firm steaming curve. Oh, mm -hmm. the, okay. the, does it make sense to you yeah. guys? This, they are, they're charging the same price. Okay, since they're charging the same price, they're gonna split the market, so Q1, Q2 should be the same. If they are this is for part A? This is for part A? It's the oh. very first step. Okay. I'm, I'm deriving, okay? Right. I'm deriving this. Okay, <coughs> so they're going to charge the same. If they charge the same price, they're going to split the market. So Q1 eventually should be equal to Q2. You, you probably just go ahead, look at how the book did, but that's really the traditional way of deriving this. So. Now we can write this in this way. Um, I'm going to say 2 multiply 2QI. Two QI could be Q1 or could be Q2. And the reason I make it into 2QI because I know given the same price and they're going to split the market, so Q1 is equal to Q2. So I just make it into 2QI. Okay. You follow me here? Yeah. Yep. I mean, you're, you're pretty much just combining it, right? Yeah. All right, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Right, that's what you derived, right? Okay. Yeah, they, they make you do it, or they said do it by the double step, uh, twice as steep, rather. Mm -hmm. And so that's all I did. I didn't... Um, yeah, but okay. I, I want you to understand how they... Okay. How, where is that come from? So it's actually, it's not <coughs> that easy, you know, to derive. Right. You have to make this assumption first because later on they're going to ask you what each firm prefers price, right? So you know they're going to charge a different price, right. actually, right? And that's what I couldn't figure out how to how to do the, because it said do it by the marginal cost, the horizontal marginal cost. And yeah, I, that, I that's, yeah, okay, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me think about, should I start just talking about this problem, or should I go go ahead and do something else? How about question three? It's, that is pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. No, no problems there. So that is what we talked about last class, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so question two is actually I'm going to talk about. So you know what? Let's put the question two aside. I'm going to get back to it today at the end of class. Okay. Okay, because there's something else that I want to cover. Okay, first. Okay. <coughs> so. All right. Okay, so let's put it aside here. Okay, 
it doesn't make me feel so bad about last night. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> and then I forgot my uh, I forgot my homework in my in my office, so I had to do this in uh, in between classes oh, real okay. quick. Oh, at least uh, you got some extra practice. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so okay. So think about what this chapter is about. Okay. You know, once in a while, we need to step back. From all this mathematical stuff, and think about what we're trying to do. We're doing here. We're learning here. What we're learning. What we're learning in this chapter. I guess we're we're learning how it's profitable for firms to work together, or you know how they can uh, hurt each other mm -hmm. if they if they don't if they decide they say they're going to and then they don't. Mm -hmm. So all this chapter is derived from that prisoner dilemma game, right? You know, that's what we talked about at the very beginning. Is there is a prisoner dilemma situation. Prisoner dilemma situation tells us if they cooperate, they're going to be both better off. But, you know, if it's one shot game, they will never do that. Right. So all this chapter is about is how can they achieve this inclusive agreement? Okay. What are the barrier? What are the difficulties? they encounter when they're trying to reach this collusive agreement. Okay, so that's what this chapter about. Okay, so the, the conditions or the difficulties, the obstacles they have to overcome to reach that collusive agreement. Okay, so everything else. So last class we talked about the trigger price strategy. Right. So trigger price strategy is a strategy, <coughs> a one of strategy they, they can adopt in order to reach this exclusive agreement, right? We mm -hmm. talk about how do we um, establish this trigger price strategy and how how can we uh, sustain this exclusive agreement with this adoption, right? That's what we talk about the last class, okay? So yeah, keep, you know, every time we're, we're going into a new chapter, there's so many, so much mess there. Do not forget what we're trying to do because okay. that will keep you uh, focused and keep you understanding sharp. All right, so so since we talk about the trigger price strategy, we're going to continue on that trigger price strategy. So we're going to analyze more about the trigger price strategy. Okay, so trigger price strategy this. Okay, so basically it is all equilibrium path strategy. So which means it tells you if the one of the player did, does not cooperate, you know, deviate from this equilibrium situation, what would happen, right? And what would be the punishment? So that's what the trigger price strategy is. <laughs> okay, and uh, in the game or in the example we analyzed in the last class, um, I gave you a, a specific a market demand, right? I said this, uh, this example here is 100 minus Q, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the example first we use is Bertrand oligopoly, and I gave you a market demand, I gave you the cost function. Then we, we, we did a Kuhn oligopoly example, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, <coughs> if the market demand is given, then we can solve the problem, solve the question without any problem, right? Okay, what if right now, I'm telling you, I am uncertain about this demand function. I do not this de do not know this demand function, and is one hundred minus q. Oh, I'm not sure about it. Oh, you know this demand may fluctuate as time goes by. Okay, so if the demand function is uncertain or it changes as time goes by, then how do we solve this problem? How do firms make the agreement? You guys know what I'm talking about? I want you to understand the story behind it before I go into the math. So how did they figure out the like actual demand or if the demand fluctuates? Is that what you're asking? How do they agree on pricing? Is how yes? Like how do they oh. agree on the price and the exclusive quantity without knowing the demand function for sure? Oh. Without knowing the demand for sure. And actually, that's probably a lot of the case in the real world. Right. Um. And oh, they know the demand will fluctuate. Right. You know. 
see, we take, uh, I'm not trying to be funny, but we just take uh, our uh, best swag and go forward. It's a just like kind of guess. guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. You can't okay. really. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could probably do a projection off of. Pass. You yeah. Know, and. Mm hmm. But, but I mean, really I don't know just, yeah. I have <laughs> I mean. no idea. Okay, so here I'm going to introduce you to the model. Okay, how do they? Actually, that's probably what you've been doing, Chris, in your real business. You know, when you hear about this concept, you will understand. Actually, even though you yeah. have not, re <laughs> even you have not realized that that's what you using to make your judgment, to make your decision. Okay. All right, so. You know, so now I'm going to talk about this model. Okay, there's not really math there, but it's just uh, uh, I want to show you the construction of the model. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the two people who come up is called Green and Potter. They come up this uh, trigger price model to deal with. Okay, to deal with the uncertainty in the demand. Okay, and there are several things they need to know. Okay, in order to use this model, first is n. What is n? It's a number of the games. Or number of what? The firms. Number of firms. Mm. Number of players in this market. And the second one is something both So that first one's in the N. N. Yeah. Better than Okay, so this is known. But the next one is something they have to determine. Okay, right. so it's gonna be a choice variable. It's agreed. Exclusive quantity. <coughs> For each firm, during normal periods, What do I mean by normal periods? Normal periods is, is a period when none of them deviate from the equilibrium path. Once, we, once they deviate from that equilibrium path, and we no longer call that normal period, they're going to be called a reversionary period. Okay, so when, whenever I say normal period, that's in they still on the equilibrium path. They are behaving cooperatively. Okay, they are using the Q star. They're choosing, they are, uh, they keep their agreement. Right. Okay. All right. So the next thing, I'm going to ask for a different marker. This is not working. Okay. Oh, both of them aren't working. Yeah. Oh, oh, darn. It's working well. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like I'll be good. I didn't even think much of it. I was like, you know what? Oh well. <laughs> well, see, like, I mean, I know I did stuff wrong. Like, this is, like, um, this is how I derived like the horizontal. Oh yeah. wait, hold on. That's you got. Uh, yeah. Wait. I, I did it completely different here, and then I was kind of going back, and it was just it, it just turned. Like, I got I, I got know. the same quantity for Q one though. That's awesome. Cool. No. Uh. Well, no, mine might have been like 18, and that might have been 15 or something yeah, like that. But we're in the we're in the moment. <coughs> yeah, but then I was like, this can't be right I mean, because you, mm -hmm. you know. And then I started doing it like this. Yeah. You know, and I mean, you you get you start getting oh uh, yeah really similar mm -hmm. stuff, and you're like, well, not, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. And then when I did it, when I did it last night, using the motion, I went through. Thank you, Ryan. It seemed like, oh, no. Awesome. Okay, so the next choice variable they're going to determine is T. That's no good either. Oh, boy. 
And T is the lens. I'm gonna go back to my office, guys. Okay. Okay. It's not. Uh, no worries. Just read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Trigger price strategy. Um, never mind. Oh. You said she wouldn't count it. I know. Oh. Totally agree. Totally agree. I know I'm I'm doing plan on doing a lot more of this this week though because uh I pretty much spent all weekend studying for a test that I didn't have today. Oh yeah, that you were saying that you were gonna Google the um that modeling or that not that modeling but that program because you're gonna have test on, a test on it. What program? Uh, the one that you Capsim. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's not until like April, late April. Oh, okay. Yeah, but like uh, we had like a like a class exam, like a chapter exam. I studied for all week and it was supposed to be today, but then they canceled it yet again, and now I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so, <coughs> all right. Should work if it does not. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Yeah. The lens of reversionary period. Reversionary period. So this is the number of period that is off the equilibrium path. And so this will be the number of period that each firm will be punished. Okay, so in the example I gave to you in the last class, we say that punishment is forever. Right? So that's the example. Mm -hmm. But in this modeling, and T become a choice variable. They're going to determine. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, Q star T, and also there's another variable. The another variable we, we call this is a P and the line. Okay? And uh, this is a P and the line. What do we call it? Um, we call it trigger price. So this trigger price says this. Whenever the price is below this trigger price. Okay, so this trigger price is what the firm determined, right? Trigger price T and Q star. Okay, and uh, this trigger price strategy work like this. Okay, every time they see the market price went down below this P bar, P lower bar, and then the trigger strategy, this strategy will be triggered. Punishment will be triggered. So every time they see a market price and goes really, really low, lower than this, then the punishment will be triggered. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm going to explain. <laughs> 
<coughs> with them all on each one. So, so far, questions on this? No, yeah. no, I got one brewing. <laughs> got one brewing? Brewing. Like, I have one that's oh, okay. starting to come up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first question I want to ask you about this is this. Why the punishment is triggered when the prices go lower, not go higher? You're gonna steal the competition. Hmm? They're gonna. I mean, if if one company's price is lower, and the trigger strategy or the trigger price, um, they're gonna steal all the competition. And, That's right. Yeah. So basically, okay. So we're assuming you know there is a demand, even though we do not know about right. it. Okay. And this is you agreed exclusive quantity. Okay. So if everybody and uh, doing what they agreed. You know the quantity should remain to be this or two Q star, and then the price should be at a certain level based on demand, right? So if the price is equal to one hundred minus Q, okay, you plug this two Q star into it, you can establish the price, okay? And this price should be always above this, right. okay? So whenever you see actually the actual price <coughs> and goes really really low, that's the indication. They did not choose a great quantity. Okay. They go what? They go higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They go higher. So, so that's a cheating. Okay. Right. So that's why, you know, and uh, they established this trigger price. So, so that's the the idea behind it. They want each firm to stick with this, and but they cannot observe this. Okay. So this is the thing. They cannot observe this. The only thing that can be observed in the market is actual price that is charged. Okay. Right. So if the actual price charge is really, really low, lower than this agreed trigger price, then the punish. So that's the indication something going on, a form or both form, and uh, produce too much. Right. Question. I want you to ask question. Well, it's it, it it's it's really related but unrelated at the same time. Mm -hmm. What if for some reason people just aren't buying and then you know you end up having a surplus after awesome you know, after question. two months? Great question. That's why you need to ask. So every time you have a question, ask, okay? Because that's what we're gonna talk about in this model, because there's uncertainty about demand. Exactly what you said, you know, what if the demand just goes down? Right? right? Okay. So they take that into consideration. Okay. okay? So what if the demand uh, decreases? First, I want you to think about if the demand decreases, what what will happen? If they say they stick with they stick with the agreement, they stick with agreement. They do not want they do not defect, but the demand goes down. Think about demand is we we'll have this demand curve right. like that. Right. Demand goes down means demand <coughs> shift to the right, left. Left, right? Okay. Yes, I mean so prices so will what, go down. I mean, right. Yeah. I mean. So the so, the so price will go down, right? right. Yeah. Even you know w without doing anything else, okay? Without change of this, they stick with this. But because the demand goes down, and the price will go down. So there is a chance that this price will go below this trigger price specified. Right. Yep. Okay. So how do, how do they prove that they didn't do anything wrong, you know, so they don't get punished without proving that they were colluding? Very good question. Okay. So so they're when they establish this model here, okay, so when the when the two form get to get that get together, determine these three variables here, okay? They take into the consideration of this uncertainty of demand. They take that into consideration when they determine this T, determine this Q star, determine this P bar. Okay? So, and after they take all that into consideration, and they're going to 
find what we call the optimal Q star. Optimal T, of course, there's a relationship among them. So probably there are several sets, a lot of different sets of the optimal ones. Hmm. Are you, you guys with me? Yeah. They're going to choose optimal Q star and so Q star and T and P. And probably there are several sets, okay? They're going to pick, you know, a set that makes the deviation less profitable. Just a deviation of Q and T, not P? Hmm? Uh, a deviation of all those? Deviation means, de de yes, deviate from this Q star. Okay. Gotcha. So they're going to get together. They, they analyze uncertainty in the demand. And then they eventually use mathematics. They, they, they solve this. They find this Q star T and this P bar. When they find those, those are the values that gives no incentive to any form to deviate from the Q star. <clears throat> and now let me ask you this. Okay. So those optimal values are in agreement, are in place. Now the nature nature review the demand. Okay? And at the end what we see here is eventually the actual price went down below P bar. So what does this tell you? Well, so, I mean, if, if, well, I'm sorry, go ahead and repeat it. Okay. So, <laughs> I confused myself like immediately. Okay, so they got together, okay, they analyzed everything, they come up with this. Okay, the reason why we call it optimal because if they use this, then nobody has any incentive to debate. Right. Okay. Okay. So this is in place <coughs> in the contract. But then the nature revealed the actual demand. Okay. Something. Sorry, go okay. Nature revealed the actual demand. Then after the demand revealed, an actual price is realized. An actual price actually happens to be like that. Well, then uh, if the price is below, then then the market demand isn't as high as they thought. Exactly. So from this, what they observe, they know, oh, this lower of the price is not due to the deviation, is due to the decrease of the demand. Exactly. So you got it, Chris. So really, when, whenever they design a trigger strategy, they don't want that trigger strategy to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, as long as you design it optimal, then nobody should any have incentive to do it. But if you see something that's happened, then you can rule out that is from deviation. Is it just purely due to the demand decrease? Right, so, I mean, they could, their actual price could be whatever, but the trigger price, you know, say the actual price is $90, $100, but the actual trigger price is 75 that's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. Gotcha. You can, you can think about from, you know, your, your business point of view, actually, this is what you're using in your head. You know, even though you're probably not going to do those kind of fancy nests, but unconsciously, right. yeah. you take that the demand, uncertainty of demand into consideration when you make agreement with, with another firm. You, right. you, you, um, you're going to do that no matter what. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. It happens a lot when negotiate, um, especially labor uh, uh, labor cost mm -hmm. between uh, me right. and a drywall firm or whoever. Mm -hmm. So did you, he missed. Yeah, um, what is? Well, why don't you explain to him? <laughs> there you go. Okay, so what we, what we talked about was um, when you find the optimal um, Q, Q t, uh, t and a uh, um, uh, trigger price. Right. If the price goes below that, or well, let me back up. Uh -huh. When you have those, it means that there's no incentive. It, there's absolutely no incentive to right. uh, to, to de deviate right. from it, and so if price ends up going below the trigger price, right? Why? Oh, 
why why would if if that's the case why would the price ever go below the trigger price um it would be that uh decrease in the or, or yeah, the, the, the market demand okay yeah the demand. so basically when you choose the optimal optimal variables optimal right. values you rule out the possibility anybody will deviate right so nobody will you know will cheat if nobody cheat but price still Gets too low, what happen? It must due to the demand. Change. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's she the only part. That's uh, <laughs> no. And I understand what you're saying. Um. But yeah, I mean that's just the only case that would happen. So. That's right. That's right. right. Cool. Okay. So that's why the optimal strategy is very very important. Design of optimal strategy is very important. Yeah. And why wouldn't it be like a supply increase? Well, because that would that would increase or that would decrease price too, right? Well, it'd be there'd be excess huh. supply because the oh, uh, yeah. because nobody's buying. Right. Okay. Um. Silly. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. Okay. So the next we want to discuss a little bit about this relationship among Q star and T and the trigger price because they're going to work together, right? Okay. And if you increase one of the variable value, you probably do not need to increase the other two. You probably could need, need, you need, could need, I'm sorry, need to decrease the other two or one of them. Mm. So there is a relationship among these three. So that's the next thing I want to um, discuss, okay? <coughs> okay, what's the relationship? Okay, if they say um, the, the firm decide to change this okay so let's say they have a set in place okay they have set in place and that is optimal but now they want to find another set okay that is also optimal okay so they say i'm going to decrease this trigger price if the trigger price is decreased how are you going to change the other two variables to accommodate this change in order for this strategy profile still to be optimal? Well, I would, I would think that you would increase Q star, um, but I don't know what I don't know if you'd have to, or how you would change the period. You should increase or decrease the number of punishment period. Basically, T is the number of punishment period. The, okay. long, oh, the longer, the, right. longer the T is, the, 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 the more punishment is, right? Okay. Well, maybe, so uh, let, let me ask you this. What does this imply? When the trigger price is lower, what does it imply? So intuitively, what does that mean? It means yeah. the, it's easier for the firm to cheat or not? As, I mean, is it more likely for the firm to cheat or less, less, likely? less likely? Less likely, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Less likely? Yeah. yeah. So Why is it less, less likely? likely? Well, because they're <laughs> going to make less money. I mean, everybody is. I mean, if your if your trigger price is, is lower, um, there's let there's even less incentive to cheat. So less strategy will be considered as cheating. That's hear what I said. Less will be less strategy that will be considered as cheating. Will be less circumstance that will be considered as cheating. Okay, I'm going to. Let's see, originally he had here is $5. Okay, originally it's right here. Okay. And uh, here is zero. Okay. <clears throat> Before, if the actual market price end up with $4, then that will trigger the punishment, right? right. Okay. If it's uh, here, three. I will trigger the punishment. Mm -hmm. right. But now, I put the P head right here. Mm. Okay? And only when the price go down here, that's when the 
the punishment is triggered. Right. So the punishment is triggered much less. Mm. So you're. Uh, uh. So that means actually, there is more chance for the forms to cheat. see that one. Why you don't see it? Well, because if the, if they uh if there's less circumstances that they could cheat, then I mean, how why would they be more likely to cheat? No, 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 no. Yes, maybe the way I, I express it, it is not very accurate. What I mean here is, <coughs> it's more likely for them to uh, increase the quantity. And to have a lower price. Right. Okay. Right? right. Because before, if they increase the quantity, they end up here. That would be considered as a cheating. But now they no longer consider as a cheating. Right. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that makes sense. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I know it takes a lot of brain power to think about. So knowing. There will be less less situation that will be considered as cheating. Okay, how are you going to change T? Let's start with T. How are you going to change T to accommodate change? Okay, right now think about scenario two compared to scenario one. Well, less circumstances are considered as cheating. Okay, so that is change. But now we want to change this T in order to um, compensate this change. So make this change go away, in a sense. Uh, the way my mind is, is is working at the moment is if they have that low of a tr like in the example you've given if, if mm -hmm. they have that low of a trigger price and there's that little circumstance that they would cheat and they're going to increase quantity then the length of the um, uh, punishment periods would go down as well would but, go down. yeah I mean because I mean I mean it seems like you would have that favorable of an agreement if everybody was committed. Mm -hmm. So okay. you wouldn't need it. All right. So let me get back to this optimal strategy profile. This is stuff is not easy, I'm telling you. This is, this is not easy. Okay. Even there's no math in, in wall. There's a lot of understanding. Okay. So optimum strategy is designed in order to have a marginal benefit from colluding is greater than the marginal benefit from cheating. So every time we say this is an optimal strategy, and that means they make the benefit of colluding bigger than the benefit of uh, cheating. Okay, so I mean, mm -hmm. if, if the price as the price decreases, there's not that much difference between going below uh, the trigger price. Mm -hmm. As far as um, I mean, it, I don't know if this is making any sense. It's if there is a gap, it's not it's not much it's not that great. Mm -hmm. um, whereas um, you know, if you have a if you have a high trigger price, you know, you can still it's still very profitable to go underneath it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if there's that decrease in that difference, then I would, you probably want to make the periods longer. It is. You want period longer. Because when you want to make the period longer, you make the, you make the, um, the punishment cost higher. Right. And what this does is, what this does, what this does here is you make the punishment cost smaller, right? right. Because there's less situation that will be considered as cheating. Thus, there's less 
uh, there's a smaller probability of situation that consider cheating. So the cost of the cheating is smaller when you move the p bar to this. So the cost of cheating is smaller. But since you want to maintain this optimal strength, you want to maintain, you know, you want to this close agreement to be sustained, you want the cost of the cheating to be at this level. Right. So if this makes the cost of cheating smaller, you go to increase T to make up with the, the loss of the cost of cheating. Make sense? Yeah. I mean, even when I explain it, it's, it, it takes some energy. Johnson? Okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to think, like, um... Yeah, so, so what, this what? is hard to understand. So basically, this makes uh, the cheating less costly. Oh. That's what I want to... So it, it's yeah. triggered less often and it's... it's that's why. So the oh. cheating is less... Yeah. That's probably to okay. apply. So the cheating is less costly. So... But when you increase this T here, you make the cheating more costly. Okay. So that's why this two is going to work together. So if you in decrease this, you got to increase that. Okay. All right. Got it. <coughs> I know it's convoluted, right? It's convoluted. Yeah. yeah, I guess I was just um, getting a little lost of a... Uh... Yeah, I, I was thinking about, you know, it's it's being triggered much less, and I was guess I was trying to piece mm -hmm. it together until I heard that last part. Okay. Okay, yeah. All right, so, so again, this is from the aspect of maintaining a certain level of cause of cheating, right? Okay, so we need to do this. But the other aspect, so this is one aspect. The other aspect is... We're going to take a look at this problem, not from the cause of cheating, from the benefit of the colluding, okay? Oh, so that, that's cause of cheating, that and we're doing benefit, okay. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> so <clears throat> if this goes down, and you know if this goes down, you know the cheating becomes less costly, okay? To make the balance, to balance this out, you can either make the cheating more costly to do that, or and you can make the benefit of colluding higher. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. How do you make the benefit of colluding higher is what Chris suggested. You can increase Q star. So both increase T and increase Q star are, are, are designed or used to counteract this change. But this, this impact comes from two different sources. This is designed to change the cause of the cheating. This is designed to change the benefit of the colluding. Yeah. <clears throat> So, I mean, really, here, there's no math, but what I want you to understand the story and the relationship behind this modeling here. Okay. Is it better now? Yeah. <laughs> A lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it took me a well while to um, um, comprehend everything and put everything together when I stuff and teaching you guys actually helped me. So this is about um, uncertainty of the demand. Okay, when you have uncertainty of the demand, and that's what firm want to do. Okay, 
and they want to design this, and also the design of this is related to the relationship among the three variables. That's their relationship. Okay, so this model is about uncertainty with demand. So the next model is still something to do with demand, but it's not uncertainty, it's random demand. The demand is randomly. observe random demand okay and then they're going to use epsilon to represent demand okay so they say this epsilon um, changes from So they give uh, upper bound and the lower bound, lower bound and upper bound. They say this demand, this random demand changes from here to here. Okay, okay. So this is known information. Okay. Are those D's? It's not E. It's, we call it epsilon. It's right. No, I mean I understand it, but I'm just saying, what's it, does it look like an E? Because I'm trying to write it, it in my it notes. It looks like <laughs> E, but it is. Right. Like that, yeah. And so even the smaller ones are yeah, they're oh, okay. all the same thing. I just yeah. It's lower case or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Sorry. It's okay. It's called error term. So very first question here, okay? So we know the demand is going to change, okay? And change randomly. Question is, when the demand increases, okay? So what do you think the tendency of cheating? When demand increases? When the demand increases. I would, I would think the tendency would be to uh, cheat. Why? Well, because there's... Uh, the, the, obviously, the market's growing. You can produce more and make more profit. That's right. That's right. So, when the demand is increases, there's more tendency to cheat. Okay, and uh, as the higher the demand is, so as epsilon goes up, the tendency gets higher and higher. The so benefit of cheating become higher and higher. Right? Okay. So then they specify a a, a threshold cutoff value, epsilon star. Okay. Epsilon star is the cutoff value and where the benefit of cheating always the cost of cheating for all forms. Okay. When they actually model this out, they actually model out, they don't combine these two, do they? Come on, which two? The epsilon star onto when they're trying to figure out um, on the last one, the um, the uh, trigger price model. Do, I mean, do they use them together or is this... Do this they is the same, a, same thing. Okay. This is within the trigger price model. Oh, okay. The only thing that's different is the demand. In that example, demand is for sure. In that one we just talked about, demand is unknown. Okay. And also changes. But this one is is known but the changes. Okay. So is it the demand changes from gotcha. example item but everything else is the same. Yeah. Okay. So we just take off this component of the demand, we analyze it. Okay. How the change of demand and affect their behavior, how affect the model here. Okay, so 
epsilon star is a cutoff value. So when they reach this high, then there will be cheating for sure. Okay. But if the firms do not want cheating and epsilon has reached the epsilon star, then what firm can do in additionally to avoid the cheating? Increase the uh, periods that you punish? It could increase the period. Let's say, you know, even forever, when T is reached infinity, this is still true. Think in the real world. Use your business, think about the real world. Think about right now, the demand is really, really high, okay, for the business you're conducting right. with your competitors. And then they cheat. I would cheat too, obviously. I, mean, mm -hmm. I would increase um, my production as high as I could. And what else you can do? I can lower prices. That's right. So when this happens, so the firm could do this. Uh, that makes sense. Reduce the price. Yeah. So that is one way that may reduce the incentive of the cheating. So increasing output no longer that powerful, no longer be effective. And right now, the reducing the price probably is more effective in order to prevent cheating. Yeah. So, I mean, actually the models come from the, the real world. Right. Yeah. So, but that's not trigger price, that's just actual price. That's right, exactly, that's right. Experience is the best teacher in my opinion. I said experience is the best, you know, teacher in my opinion. Me? Oh. Experience. Experience. The best the teacher? Yeah. Like experience, you know, teaches you the best. I, I think. saw you compliment me. Well, I, I mean you're you're so a happy. great <laughs> You're a great professor too. Don't get me wrong. I just I like experience. It's yes. good. Experience is the best teacher. Oh I see what you're saying. That's yep. right. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do do we get from this you know, simple rationale? This simple rationale is this, okay. When this is really, really high, when you reach this high, it's an indication of economic growth, right? Okay, and the economy is growing, and demand is really high, people really want it. It's, 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 it's economic growth. But when there is economic growth, you would, what would you think about the price when there is economic growth? I mean, in general. If there's economic growth in the region, what would you expect the price is going to happen? Going to raise, going to go up or go down? Mm, go, go up, yeah. right? <laughs> when there's booms, you know, you expect, you, you expect the price to go up. But what this model tells you this? No, actually, that's not what's happening. In this kind of market, the price will go down. Right. So this relationship here is exactly opposite to what microeconomic theory predict. And that's why this model is interesting and is useful. Because what they're saying here is even there's economic growth, but to prevent cheating, to sustain inclusive agreement, to, to sustain inclusion, what you might see in a certain market is the lower price. And this researcher, if you read book, I want you to go, go, go home read book, and they show some industry that has happened like that. There's economic growth, there's booming, but price actually has gone down. So this prevents cheating and colluding? Mm -hmm. oh. And the reason behind this, you know, and weird phenomenon is this, is this. So this model kind of helped to explain why there is a price reduction and during a boom. There's a lot of elimination before you can get to that though. Yes, yes. Yeah, because many other factors can contribute to the price reduction. You right. have to, yes. Statistically, you have to, yeah, rule out all that. So I want you to read that, you know, and that story. I think it's, uh, 274 mm. is where it, that's 
starts. Yeah, then, yeah, that's right. And then 276 is the right. salt. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I want you to read it, and it's, it, it is eye-opening, okay. you know. <coughs> Any other question you want to ask? I like you guys ask questions, especially if, if I cannot answer it. That means, you know, that's a good question. Shall we move on? Yep. <laughs> okay, so that's the uh, two models I want to introduce. Basically, these two models answer the question about uncertainty demand and also the change of demand. So next, and we're going to talk about... I do have one quick question. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Okay, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. How would this look actually modeled out? You mean theoretically? Yeah. Or empirically? Empirically, preferably, but... Okay, so what economists, economists will do is, okay, for example, they will get the GDP, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, they will get, if, you know, you pick a certain market, you will get the price, you know, and within that's three years or five years, so you have this data. And also you're going to collect the price of the related goods that related market, the price of that, mm -hmm. okay? And you look at the price of the related good. Because there's the economic boom, you, you're going to see the, the, the increasing price of the related good or related market. But then you see the price change here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? And the probably other factors you're going to get, get, you know, need to collect. For example, um, the mergers, you know, whether there's any merge and whether there is new firms coming in, I would think that's all going to be relevant data, and also the cost, um, cost information, see so whether, you know, and the cost has been improved in, the, in, the, in that five years, okay? Right. To see whether the cost has been improved, you look at, you know, their investment in the technology and the research and development, mm -hmm. see so whether there's new technology has been adopted in those five years. See, you mean, it really... Because one of the things I was thinking of is trying to find the, uh, the correlation to increase wages, mm -hmm. and so I was thinking of the substitute goods, whether you would look at that and so, see, right, if, right. see if demand of that started decreasing. Exactly. So those are all relevant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, do, to work on a problem like that, you're going to have a data that is immense. <laughs> yeah. Supercomputer exactly. kind yeah. of type. That's right. Yeah. That's why writing a <laughs> paper like that takes years. It's yeah. not like a couple months. Yeah. Okay. Because not only you have to have really good data, but you have to, I mean, analyze data to detail. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's what economists do. That's what we do. Meaningful work. It's meaningful work. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick with the finances and just crunch numbers. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Actually, I find the finance boring. I'm a, I'm a kind of boring guy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you're boring. I no, no. So. It, it's all good. Yeah, it is It is pretty bland. Just calculate stuff. and. Yeah. Because what I like about it now, because there are a lot of rationales. So right, yeah. There are a lot of understanding. It's now the just numbers. Variables and yeah. all that good stuff. It's, it's, it's almost mechanical. It's... It's like engineering. It's, it's a mechanical. Remember, there's a economic video um, that they showed in the economics club saying that uh, economics was um, like the master science because every, pretty much like every subject it's, goes into yeah, economics. It's a condition for everything. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so next the way we we're going to talk about is how hard to reach this collusive agreement when there is a symmetry in the cost, when there is a symmetry in the products. And that's actually more realistic than assuming symmetric cost function and also there's no product differentiation, right? So, but Whenever you two firms have different cost 
uh, function, which means one firm may be more has more cost advantage than the other firm, then that be harder to reach a price agreement. And whenever there is a product differentiation, it's going to be harder to reach that kind of agreement. So, so next, what we'll, we'll, I'm going to show you is mathematically why this is hard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first, we're going to deal with is symmetric cost. Okay. So I'm going to give you. This is the market demand, okay? And again, we assume that they're going to split the market, just like in that homework example, if the price is the same, okay? Okay. And also, I'm going to give you the cost function. Fixed cost is equal to 150, which is the same. Marginal cost one is equal to 40 plus 2Q1. Marginal cost two is equal to 50 plus 2Q2. So it's, it's, it's very similar to the question. It's the same question? That no, you no, no, that's the question no. from the chapter. Except okay. I don't think they give us a f yeah, fixed they, cost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, this question comes from uh, it, within the chapter. Okay. No, okay. Yeah. All right. So what I want you to do here is you have all the concepts you, 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 you need to solve this problem. I want you to solve this. What would be the... Optimal price for the from one to to set optimal output for from one and optimal price for from two and optimal output for from two. Okay. I'll do this on a fresh sheet of paper. <laughs> So what's the very first step, guys? Mm. What's the very first step? Digging to the expand, demand, expand it. The demand for each individual. Firm, yeah. Right? So. Mm -hmm.
what is Q1, Q2? Did you get the same answer as I did? Oh, for each individual one? Yeah. Uh, it's mm. 85 and uh, 87.50. Yes. Mm. Mistake was. <clears throat> okay, cool. So I have to do it doing the uh, total revenue, then doing the marginal revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't. Oh. I don't like skipping. <laughs> yeah, you don't like. Yeah, I don't like it either. But I just use the twice as the. Yeah. Use, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So now you see, you know, each one of them want to maximize their profit. That's what they want to set. Okay, and they're different. Okay. In the real world, it's hard to yeah. you know come up with a different quantity quantities for it. Okay, so this is one scenario. Okay, so this scenario says this. Okay, if they each individually want to uh, pursue this, you know, and um, profit maximizing, that's the quantity. So the second scenario I want you to solve. We're not gonna have much time here. Is we want to find their combined or joint profit maximizing output and joint profit maximizing price. Okay, and what are the what they would be and which scenario give them a better payoff. Okay, and I want you I mean I'm gonna stop here. So I want you to think about this, okay? Think about the scenario if they they, they set a joint quantity, okay? okay? They set a joint price, and which scenario will be better for them? Hmm. Okay, so, Johnson, did you do some new uh, research on the paper? Mm -hmm. You did? Yep. You want to show it to me, what you've done? Sure. So, Chris, did you go? You did not go to the trip. Go no, I, did. I went on, I went on went, vacation. Went on I just okay. so, couldn't make it out there. Yeah. So, on Thursday, report yeah. to me what you have for the oh, yeah. paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty much I just um, I did the introduction um, mm -hmm. piece of it since uh, that was you know, the only time I had... Uh, Okay, so let's see. Uh, I determined their market structure was an oligopoly because they had very few competitors because of the four, um, four of the major, uh, so Verizon, ATT, T-Mobile, and Sprint. Mm -hmm. um, they have, I think they have a mixture of homogeneous and heterogeneous products. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, um, you know, all the industries, they sell phones with data plans, and of course those data plans have different prices on them. Um, I guess for the heterogeneous, uh, they have different packages and a reward system. So mm -hmm. I guess um, in that manner, they would be considered heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. um, I determined that they were hard 
and I'm going to verify this with research, but um, like I said, uh, just initial um, ideas, but uh, mm -hmm. I determined that they are hard to exit and enter because mm -hmm. of the, you know, the technology and the, you know, just the setup of... But you know um, you're going to bring more details yes. of those, right? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just getting like a... Skeleton. Basic, right, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do research later. That's all good. Um, okay, and uh, interdependence, I, I haven't gotten to that yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to um, research, you know, what makes, you know, a company interdependent mm -hmm. and um, and how does it affect the industry as a whole. And mm -hmm. uh, so pretty much that's, you know, again, I'm getting an okay. uh, skeleton. Start, start putting in the writing. Yes. Type it up. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And that's it's, pretty much it. Yeah, type it up. Because yep. when you start typing up, you start thinking. Okay. I always... Oh, go ahead. I, I didn't want to cut you off. Yeah. Yeah. So be because you're gonna start thinking yeah. deeper when you start. Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. I just want to get. The reason I want you right. guys to do it, I want to start make you start working on it. Yeah. And it's like a commitment to yourself. You know, if you work a little bit every week, you're gonna have less work to do at the end of semester. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I agree. Um, now, the way that I do, the way that I, I do all my research, um, I I start with the overview of, yeah. of the entire, yeah. and, of, you know, whatever the subject is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I focus on individual points. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then I kind of move on. So on Thursday, I had planned on giving you guys, because I've already done a little bit of it, okay. um, kind of an overview of, of the origins mm -hmm. of the industry itself, the tech, you know, technological innovations, the introduction of um, uh, like the FAA, you know, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Uh, how its role changed with uh, mm -hmm. uh, different events um, okay. or different calamities in history, okay. you know, and then deregulation and stuff like that. So it's kind of history oh, review. Well, yeah, yeah a little so, bit. Mm -hmm. so it'll be all of it intertwined, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it'll be a percentage of the whole thing. I see. Yeah, okay. that's fine. And then the <laughs> other thing is, is I write out everything yeah. repeatedly. And the reason being is, and I, I think I, I told you this before, when, see you later, when I have, when I write out like this, mm -hmm. and then I go back and it's like, you know what, this yeah, key component you, of yeah, these economic see, stability you, you have is it, important. It's not deleted, yeah. Right, and yeah. so, mm -hmm. you know, and then, I mean, I do the same thing on this. Oh, you do it for yourself? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll go back through and, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll do this. That's that's neat. You have a good habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm also a history major, so. Yes. You, <laughs> so we you have. Like to write history. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, my notes look illegible, <laughs> but they make sense.